represent will be an 11 percent and possibly even a 14 percent increase in nitrogen oxide emissions, a 13 percent increase in hazardous air pollutants, 25 percent increase in particulate matter, and an 11 percent uh, increase in mercury emissions. These are huge numbers. Remember I told you that the combined power generation of these three biomass plants is less than 1% of the state's generation capacity. And yet, for that tiny little bit of power, the so-called renewable power that's supposed to be so great, we get to put up with a 25% increase in particulates. And we know, and EPA knows, that there's a linear relationship between particulate matter in the air and how often people go to the hospital. Talking a little bit more in detail about nit nitrogen oxides, EPA has acknowledged that the standards set in 2008 were not as protective as their own science advisory committee recommended. Comparing Palmer's NOx emissions with those from the Mount Tom coal plant, the Mount Tom coal plant emits just under one pound of NOx per megawatt hour. The Palmer plant would emit exactly one pound. It's the same. It's the same as a coal plant. NOx emissions are interesting because they're recognized to be really dangerous. Ground level ozone is a huge health threat. And so any large emitter of NOx is required to purchase something called offsets. Offsets are when you pay somebody else to stop emitting so that you can emit. And they're supposed to buy offsets at a higher ratio than what they're emitting. So for every ton that they're going to emit, they have to pay someone else to take 1.26 tons out of the air. So what the Russell plant and what the Palmer plant have done is they have bought offsets that already happened back in 2000 and 2002 in Boston. And they were banked. This is perfectly legal under cap and trade. But what it means is that our air quality suffers now from high NOx and paying someone for a reduction that they made back in the year 2000 isn't going to improve our air quality one bit. This is in the air permit. Moving on to what makes Palmer unique. Significant source of hazardous air pollutants. Pressure treated CCA wood contains copper, chromium, and arsenic. Okay. It was banned by EPA for good reason. It's extremely toxic, but it's actually being re-registered. It's going to come back into use. This means that although the plant proponent will tell you that, oh, you know, the amount of CCA wood in the fuel stream is gradually decreasing because we're using that stuff up and finally it won't be there anymore, but that's not true. It's actually increasing. They're going to burn painted wood. The sorting at the facility where they get the plant will not pull any painted wood out of the stream. They burn every piece of painted wood they see. That means that any wood that has lead paint on it will be burned. They're going to burn composited wood that's made with glues and all the emissions that are associated with glue. God knows what those are. I don't know. I'm not a chemist, but I don't want to know. They're going to have some non-wood things that they burn, like plastics. Plastics, when they're combusted, create chlorine, and chlorine causes dioxins to form in the stack exhaust. I'm sure you've all heard of dioxins. Dioxins are widely considered to be one of the most toxic things known to man because they are toxic in such tiny, tiny amounts. So why is this being allowed? Well, Palmer got a beneficial use determination. That means that the state said, you will be allowed to burn this stuff if you can show us that you can sort it, pull out the really nasty stuff down to a level where we no longer consider it waste. We're going to call it fuel. Yeah. And that is why the Public Health Council did not get to have a say in the siting of this plant. Because it's not a waste burning plant, it's a fuel burning plant. See? Monitoring of fuel will be solely Palmer's responsibility at the sorting plant and the testing that will be done at the plant itself will be pretty much entirely up to the developer. DEP has some nominal oversight, but we know that DEP is busy and they're being laid off all over the place, so I don't know where they're going to fit watching Palmer into their busy schedule, but 
they will be required to do fuel testing and they will tell you, we're going to test the fuel every day. So, what I tell you before, they're getting 45 tractor trailer loads of wood a day on average, what they burn. It gets pulled on a conveyor belt into the boiler where it gets burned. Every few hours, they're going to take a couple of samples, throw them in a bag, composite one big bag per day, and then that big bag gets sent off to a remote facility where it gets tested for fuel contaminants in the chips. And then every three months, they're going to tell you what came out of the stack three months ago. Feel better? I know I don't. <laughs> Two kinds of controls on fuel quality. One is what goes into the boiler, so you can say, all right, we're not going to burn this contaminated fuel. And then the other control is actually in the emissions control equipment that's on the stack. So the fuel specification allows them to burn painted and glued wood. They're gonna, they say they're going to pull out the, the CCA wood that they can see. Um, but this, and the stack controls are indeed state of the art. Like they're probably the most sophisticated controls on any plant in the country. They will tell you that. But they've got what I call emission creep, <laughs> which is that their stated emissions efficiency have increased, increased through different incarnations of the filings that they've made. So that now, um, you know, God Himself couldn't find the three molecules of arsenic that they say are going to escape from the stack, but. Um, I'm extremely skeptical that the manufacturer would guarantee stack performance 100% of the time, which is what we want, right? We breathe the air every day, we want that stack control to work every day. Five contaminants of concern. Emissions are still going to be high, even with controls. Lead. They have to reduce the emissions on paper, but they're not going to exclude painted wood. They are going to have higher lead emissions than Bondi's Island waste incinerator. Mercury, they're going to have higher emissions than the 146 megawatt coal plant down the road. Now, I'm not a big fan of coal plants, but Mount Tom just spent $57 million improving their emissions controls. And one of the things, one of the reasons they're meant, they have to do that and spend that money is that they have to reduce mercury under Massachusetts law. And along comes Palmer, a stinky little 38 megawatt plant, and gets to emit more mercury than Mount Palm. Arsenic. Their emissions would be 51% of DEP's 24-hour health threshold, TEL. DEP has a 24-hour standard that you're allowed to breathe and an annual standard that you're allowed to breathe. You can breathe more pollutants for a day and not get sick. But if you breathe a high level like that all year, you would get sick. So they have these two different levels. So the TEL is the daily level, and the AAL, AAL is the yearly level. So arsenic emissions, with all the controls, this is their most optimistic projection, will still be 51% of what you're allowed to breathe in a day. Chromium emissions, 41% of the EP's yearly standard. 41%. Dioxins, also 41% of the yearly standard. These are very high numbers. These are their numbers out of their air filing using their most optimistic projections. No background data on hazardous air pollutants, as I said. So no real way to evaluate how these emissions will stack up against what's already there. Within two miles of Palmer, EPA lists many sites known to be emitters of hazardous air pollutants, including metals. Uh, I won't read you this list, but you know, there's a bunch of them. I mean, you guys live right here, you know what's here. Solution, Nova, all these different things, national metal finishing. Some of these are chrome plating shops, they'll have chromium emissions. And Palmer paving itself, where the, where the plant is going to be built, will continue to operate, and that's a national Nas on the national uh, database of, of emitters for EPA. Just to remind you one more time of this picture, this really crappy looking picture, sorry, um, that this plant is going to be located in a very residential area with a lot of school kids going to school around it. And in summary, Palmer would be a regional source of ground level ozone and particulates in a region that already has high rates of asthma. Palmer will emit significant <coughs> amounts of heavy metals and dioxins in an area that's already burdened with toxic emissions.